It's Monday, it is 4.45, it is March the 18th. I am still in my classroom, obviously. Hopefully I, I will be leaving soon. Um, as far as how my weekend went, it went okay. Saturday, a good chunk of my day was spent getting my locks taken down. We are back with this little ponytail that we've been wearing to death. Um, like I said in the last vlog, you might be seeing this until the end of the year. It's just very easy to do. It allows me to work out. It keeps my hair in good condition. So you may be seeing this for a while. So hopefully you don't mind it because um, that's what we're going to be doing. And so I spent most of my day on Saturday doing that. I came home, did laundry, did a little bit of work, less than what I thought I was going to have the energy to do. I just didn't have the energy to do as much as I wanted. And then yesterday I ran the errands I would have normally ran on Saturday, Trader Joe's, Target. I had to go to Ulta to pick up a couple of things. And there was somewhere else I feel like I needed to go that I went to. Um, no, maybe that was it. Those three places. And then I came home. Actually, before all that, I put my laundry away and did all that. And then I came home, ate, rested for a bit. And then I went to my brother's house to visit my niece, my brother, my sister-in-law. My parents were there. And then I came home and went to bed. And here we are on Monday. Um, I woke up this morning just kind of in a mood. Uh, over the last few days, and my mom was more concerned than anybody because she's a mom, like my heart has been fluttering. And I've experienced that feeling before, like years ago. I did go and get tests done when I first experienced it. And it was kind of them saying, you're probably stressed, you, or you're probably under anxiety. Um, but I had like my heart rhythm tested and I did have a slightly irregular heartbeat. So I would say for a few days last week and yesterday, it's not happening today, um, but just like my heart was fluttering and my mom was asking me, she kept saying, is it getting any better? Is it getting any worse? And I was telling her, it doesn't get better or worse. It's pretty consistent. And then my sister-in-law was asking, what does that feel like? I said, it just feels like, kind of like your heart is in your throat or that you're not getting a full exhale. Um, it's just a weird feeling. And so my brother had said he had experienced that also last year. And obviously I Googled it and the leading uh, reason that it gives when you Google it is that you are probably experiencing some level of anxiety. You might be stressed. You might have had too much caffeine. So although my mom has been really worried because she's a mom, I do think it's just me having a lot of anxiety. And I think I maybe had more caffeine than I normally do um, last week. But more than anything, I think it's anxiety. And that led me this morning to be like, what are you anxious about to the point where you would have these heart flutters? I think I'm just anxious about um, the color run. Like I've never done it before and I need to find out about sales, but I'm feeling like I haven't sold as many as I want. I found out today some students haven't even gotten the handout <laughs> to order the package and that handout was provided to teachers a little bit more than a week ago when that's frustrating that we're not all doing our part um, I know teachers get busy but if someone gives me a flyer handout like I, I make it a point to remember to do that so I will put it somewhere so that I don't forget um, and I think just my birthday is coming up and I, I hate to admit it but I think I do have some anxiety about getting older um, and just the birthday every time my birthday comes up for the past few years, I always get a little nervous because I don't know how I'm gonna respond to it. Some years I'm indifferent to getting a year older, some years I'm at peace with it, and then some years it produces anxiety within me. And in all honesty, it's because I really thought that by this age I would have been married, I would have had kids, and that's not to say that I don't like my life the way that it is. I am very fortunate. I know that I have a home, a roof over my head, a car that works, my health, family that loves me. I have friends, but I think my mind had just assumed I would be doing certain things in life and I'm not doing them. Um, and what is more frustrating is I don't know if my anxiety around that is even my own anxiety. Like, Am I anxious because that is what society said I was supposed to have done by now? Or am I anxious because I haven't done that and that's been this deep-rooted desire? 
I personally feel like it's the former. Uh, I like kids, but I've, I'm like not one of those kids that melt or one of those people that melt at the sight of babies and kids and are like, oh my God, my life's mission is to be a mother. So I feel like these are all things that I, I believe I was supposed to have done and I didn't do it. Um, and so I, that creates anxiety and it frustrates me because I don't know if it's really mine or not. And I don't know if any of that made sense, but I know that has something to do with it. Um, and I hate that. I hate that I have that feeling and like, and it annoys me that I even have that feeling. It annoys me because I feel like it's keeping me from experiencing a certain level of ultimate peace and joy with my life the way that it is. So what my goal is for my upcoming birthday is to give myself the gift of me, which means to really spend the next year and hopefully years going forward, just really appreciating me, who I am, where I'm at and what I'm doing and to just relinquish the feeling of, well, I'm this age, I should be doing this or I should have done that because that's not even something that I think I would have thought had people not spent a lot of time telling me that's what I should think. Or if that's not what society says, I just, it's, it's just really annoying to me. It's like, it's frustrating to me. Um, and I think that's where some of my anxiety comes from. <laughs> and again, I just said a lot of things and I don't even know if it was all coherent, but all that to say, like I'm really working on maintaining a consistent level of peace with my life and the life that I'm living on my terms while being open to the future and not letting other people put their expectations or their anxieties on me so that then they become my anxieties and cause me to have these heart flutters. So I haven't had the flutters today. Um, my sister also said it may mean that I need to be drinking more water. And again, I, I feel like I drank a little bit more caffeine than normal last week. And I know there were a couple of days where my water intake was low. None of that has anything to do with teaching. Um, but that's just me talking to you about my life while I'm in the classroom because teaching is not my entire life. So I got to work today feeling a little mentally like off and I have had a lot of things that I need to do like my prep period I really couldn't be disturbed because now Taylor and I are at a place where we need to start getting ready for leadership and yearbook applications Taylor is going to be jaunting off to Italy in a couple of days for her 30th and so what she's working on because she's done with yearbook um, the yearbook has been submitted so she has a yearbook class and she's got a little bit more time on her hands. So she is taking the lead and getting everything ready to go for um, yearbook and leadership applications. So what I have been trying to do, and it takes time and concentration so I can't really work, is creating all the materials that I need for this year's application set. Um, and I got all of this from the Q, not the Q, the CATA conference a couple years ago. So, I went to a session that was very helpful that came with all these directions on how to automate the application system. So I have a Google form as an application, a Google form for teacher recommendations, and then once you set everything up with these videos that are all housed in, or in here that I have to rewatch every year, a student's gonna fill out this application, it's gonna automatically pre-populate on a paper-based application, um, they're gonna put in teacher recommendations. It's gonna automatically send those teachers this recommendation or this letter that has the link to this recommendation form. And all of that happens by setting up all of this through Autocrat, which is something I only use once a year. So it's not second nature to me. And so I have to watch those videos every year to make sure the new application that I'm creating is linked up correctly. So for all the documents that I need and all the Google Forms that I need, I have a template that I go off of and then every year I just make a copy of the template and the name of that application. For example, this year would be the 2024-2025 leadership applications. Um, so I'm trying to get all that set up so that when we open up the applications, all the automated things are in place because once it's in place, it works like magic. It's a dream. Um, but I need to be in a room 
watching these videos uninterrupted. And I started it during my prep period, and then of course I was still interrupted, so I'm kind of in the middle of that. That is something I wanna get done for sure before I leave today. Um, so that's leadership. There are other things going on besides me worrying about the color run. The other thing I just finished doing is I just made this rubric for the narratives that the kids had to submit on Friday. So Friday they submitted their rough drafts of their narratives that are loosely based on the book Look Both Ways. Excuse me. And when they had a literary analysis essay earlier in the year, I used a rubric and I just really liked doing that. I could be a fake teacher and say, yes, every time I grade a piece of writing, I'm using a rubric, but that's not really true. Like sometimes I'm just reading what they wrote in their written response and just kind of giving them feedback and grading off my general thoughts on a scale of 100. Um, but for these bigger writing assignments, I try to make sure that I do use a rubric. So what I did was is I just found a rubric for narrative writing. Uh, that is based on the California state standards. And me being nice and realistic, I pulled a sixth grade writing rubric because I know that there's gonna be some struggles. I just know. <laughs> I just know. So my rubric is based off of sixth grade standards and I wanted to get that on Google Classroom. So I just took everything that was stated here on this paper-based one, modified it a little bit, and then made sure to attach it on Google Classroom so that when I open up every student's um, rough draft, this rubric will, rubric will be off to the side and it kind of guides me on how I score things. And then their grade will be based on that. So that's what I just finished doing. Um, so my plan is to get that well, I got that done, but to go home this evening and maybe start grading a couple of rough drafts, I'm not looking forward to it. Rough drafts in general are hard to grade. And rough drafts of stories that students made up all on their own, it's a whole nother level of torture. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna be reading stories and I'm not gonna be able to tell you what is happening in this story. Um, and so it's just very mentally taxing. So that's what I've been working on. As far as what we did in class today, we just did the vocabulary words for the next selection we're gonna read in Study Sync, which is called Born Worker by Gary Soto. I've never read the story with the class before because I, in years past, would go in order with Study Sync. I decided this year we are not reading the segment from Little Women did it last year, didn't necessarily love it, and we're not reading the segment from Tom Sawyer. So we're gonna try Born Worker, that is a cohesive short story instead of an excerpt. And so today I gave them seven vocabulary words that are supposed to be like level two words that each group is assigned. <laughs> the first group in my homeroom class was mad because they got this word genuflected. I had never heard of this word before, didn't know what it meant. I had to look it up and they were mad because they're like, everybody else's word seems relatively easy. So I just said, you're one of the lucky ones. So they get one word and then they have to define it using one of the four context clues they've been taught. They are not allowed to Google it or anything like that. When they think they have the definition, they come over to me as a group, tell me what they think it means, how did they figure out. I will either confirm that their definition is correct or give them some guidance so that they can rethink and get to the right definition. Once that's done, they go make a poster, basically following the Frere model, a picture, the definition, how they figured it out, synonyms and antonyms. So that's what we did in language arts. We didn't listen to the story at all. And then in history today, we started chapter 12, which is all about um, the United States foreign policy during the 1800s and what their take was in getting involved on in other countries' issues. Um, so we read a section. I also found this video that I showed them that I think was very helpful that kind of explained what foreign policy is. Um, it was four oh, okay. minutes and some change, and it was from the National Museum of American Diplomacy. So it just explained what um, foreign policy is, the different types of foreign policy, um, and gave them some background knowledge before we read those sections in the history book. So. 
that's what we did. I feel like I've been doing a lot of turning the camera around and turning it back, but um, all in all, a pretty smooth day. Just a little hectic. And now I'm gonna take a deep breath and hope that I get everything for these applications linked up properly because it always takes me a minute and it's kind of a pain in the butt and I wanna do it here because I have two screens. So I'm gonna say goodbye for here. No, goodbye for now. I'm not gonna end the vlog. I'll probably end it when I get home, but just popping in to say hi. That's how my day went. And that's it. <laughs> so I'll talk to you when I'm at home. Good morning. It's um, Tuesday, March. It's March, March uh, 19th. And I ended the vlog yesterday pretty abruptly. And also when I woke up this morning, well, I ended the vlog pretty abruptly yesterday because my intention was to go home and close the vlog there. And by the time I left here, it was 5.30. I need to concentrate while I log onto this computer to make sure that I know what I'm doing. It was 5.30, I was the last one here, I was tired, and by the time I got from my classroom to the car, I suddenly decided I didn't wanna talk anymore <laughs> for the rest of the day. So I went home, walked Woofy, we had a quiet walk, I didn't listen to a book or anything like that, and then um, I just decided to take it another step because I really think this year, as I've said many times before, but with my approaching birthday, really gonna work on giving myself the gift of grace for myself and listening to where I'm at mentally, physically and emotionally and respecting that. So um, I took Wolfie on a quiet walk and what my intention was, was to come home, close the vlog and then edit and upload and I realized by the time I get back from walking Wolfie, it's gonna be about six. Then I'm gonna take a shower and put my pajamas on. By that point, it's gonna be 6.37. And I was hungry, so I'm like, no. You're just gonna make this a two day vlog. You're not gonna edit the vlog and you're, you're gonna be okay with that because you guys are all very understanding. Um, no one's pressuring you to do that except for yourself. And you're not gonna do any work either. You're gonna take a shower, put on your pajamas, uh, eat dinner, and watch The Real Housewives of Potomac and go to bed. And that's what I did. <laughs> so I didn't close it out. So here we are, it's gonna be a two-dayer. It's Tuesday, um, so I'm just here to say good morning and um, get the day started. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say. I kinda wanna look at history because there's some new things that we're gonna be doing with the history lesson today since we're in a chapter that I have never taught before. And the activity in this chapter involves students becoming like foreign policy advisors. And I think today is the first day that they start that process. So I just wanna make sure I have my thoughts together there. I need to finish up the task I was doing with leadership and making sure I get the application squared away because Taylor, after today, she, I won't see her till after spring break because she's going to Italy with her family. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna focus on that. The bell's gonna ring in about seven minutes and then I'll have my prep period. Um, and I need to go buy my color run package also and make a list of things that I wanna accomplish today. So good morning, hello, how you doing? Um, talk to you soon. <laughs> so, um, it's a good thing that I looked at my calendar because I have three transition meetings today. I knew I had transition meetings this week, but for some reason I thought that they didn't start until tomorrow and that Taylor was handing all of the ones for today. Um, but that is not the case. So what a transition meeting is, is Taylor and I both teach, um, the RSP cluster, which means we have like a good, the bulk of our class is um, Gen Ed students, meaning that they don't have any sort of learning, additional learning needs or learning disabilities or any sort of barriers that might make learning difficult for them. But we also have a handful of students that do. So they're on an IEP, um, which stands for Individualized Education Plan. And legally what we have to do as they get ready to transition to high school is we have to meet with them 
and their parent and I don't really know what this person's role is at the high school level. I don't know if he's just in charge of the special ed department, if he's a teacher, um, but we meet with a person that is a representative of the high school and he kind of goes over what he believes the plan should be for that student and their needs as they get into high school. And there has to be... Miss Robinson. Hey. I would just to check with him. Um, I emailed his mom and I think I CC'd you on that and she just said thanks. So I would just pull him to see, is it done? And if so, I would then check to see, is your book read? And if so, let's take the test. <laughs> so I'll be in, a tra in there. I'm gonna come to you guys' room at 845 for the transition meetings. Do you need to know what class he's in? Oh yeah. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Bye. Hold on a second. Um, I forgot what I was saying, but I have these meetings. I have one at 8:45, and it's 8:17 right now. Then I have one at 9:05, and then I have one at 9:25. So you can see they're pretty short. Um, and they're kind of frustrating because the particular person that represents the high school, I'm just honestly not a fan because I feel like he's rushing us through these meetings. And there have been a couple where I, I know that I have some valid input on a student and the plan that he has in place for them isn't really the best plan in my educated opinion and when i say educated meaning like i've been working with the student so i know um and he just didn't want to hear what i had to say that was a couple years ago and i was annoyed the mom was annoyed the student was annoyed and so i just felt disrespected and rushed hold on oh i meant to come in sorry <laughs> oh oh can you um send with these things to J2. Okay, thanks, bye. So, yeah, so I'm there. I don't really get a lot of input. Like I'm just kind of there because legally they have to have a Jeanette teacher there. But if I do have something to say because I feel like what's being said isn't accurate or something needs to be said, I will say it. Um, and I don't think he really likes that. So <laughs> that's gonna be occurring starting in about 15, 30 minutes so it runs through my prep and through the first period that I teach which is my leadership class so I just met with the president and the vice president and showed them this slide and said you guys are in charge um, and so this kind of tells each committee what they need to be working on gives them some reminders and so yeah <laughs> it's a good thing I checked that calendar because had I not opened my planner and just assumed that I knew what I wanted to do I wouldn't have been at that transition meeting and I also need to check to make sure I have Zoom on my laptop. So, first I need to go buy my color run package. Using this form. And then I'm gonna come back and check to make sure my laptop has the updated version of Zoom. And actually I might do that now. And then by the time that's over, I probably need to go to these meetings. <laughs> so hello it is about five o'clock <laughs> i just got home and i was gonna vlog in the classroom but it was approaching five o'clock they locked the gate at five and i just kind of wanted to get out of there um but one thing i did want to say about my work day and then we're going to be done talking about work for now is that i think in the last clip and i just got home wolfie's here like um ma'am hurry up and take me out wolfie just give me a second Okay, um, I'm gonna put you guys here. You're on top of some packages that I just got that I'll share with you later. Um, but one thing I wanted to share about today is I think the last time I spoke to you, I was on my prep telling you that I had these transition meetings um, for students that are on IEPs that are about to transition to high school and it's just me 
a Jeanette teacher, the RSP teacher that is their case carrier, and the high school special ed specialist. And just kind of talking about the classes that we think are appropriate for that student next year as they start high school. Um, and so I had a couple of them. Most of them, there's not really much to say because these meetings go by so fast. They're 15 minutes. The man that runs them is talking a mile a minute. Um, I don't remember if I said earlier, I'm not a huge fan because I just don't, I don't really get the sense that he values the input of the middle school Jeanette teacher and that we're just there as like a prop. Um, and so that, that annoys me, but there were two of them that I was in today that I had some very serious concerns or some things that I thought needed to be said because the two students that I was meeting about have had some pretty um, pronounced struggles just keeping up in a general education classroom at a middle school setting with RSP support. And so these meetings occur and the high school specialist is talking a mile a minute. Sometimes parents are informed and really have a good sense of how their child is doing in comparison to the quote unquote average child their age. And then some of them don't. So in both of these meetings, because the high school person was speaking so fast, there were going to be two students that were placed in general ed, meaning like your standard freshman English class that I, as the language arts teacher, know from the depths of my soul, they're not prepared for. Like they're going to need a smaller setting and a more intensive environment to do well based on the year that I've had with them. And so, um, there were a couple statements said in these meetings that I just, I couldn't endorse and I couldn't get behind. And one of the people in the meeting, I don't think they loved the way I kind of jumped in because basically I have to invite myself into the conversation. Let's just put it that way. At no point in these transition meetings does the high school specialist turn and say, Miss Robinson, what do you think? Um, and so it's kind of like if I don't interject or insert myself, there are times where I feel like students will be placed in classes that I don't think is best for them. And I feel very strongly about it. And if I feel strong enough about it, I will interject myself and make that point. And so that happened in those meetings today. And I don't know that everyone in the room loved it, but at the same time, I'm like, well, then why am I here? Like, why are you asking me to be here when you don't really want me to say anything? And amongst the people in the room, with the exception of the eight that's there that I always work with, I'm the most knowledgeable about how that student is doing this year right now because I spend the most time with them. I can kind of see how they do in relation to other students. So I just, it was annoying because I said to someone, I'm sure people that were running the meeting were annoyed, but if I were a parent and I had an eighth grade child who was getting special education education services and we were in a transition meeting talking about what we need to do to set them up for success as they transition to high school and their gen ed teacher um, was in the meeting and had nothing to say no input camera was off mic was muted I would be annoyed um, and so I'm not going to do that and I just like I just require a higher level of professionalism from myself and if that annoys some people, I guess, uh, so be it. So that's how that went. Um, in terms of class today, it just felt very rushed. Um, we didn't get as far in social studies. We didn't get as far in history as I wanted. We read the section, but they weren't able to get in their groups and start, um, crafting some foreign policy advice to give to president adams i'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow when we're doing it language arts they just did their vocabulary presentations i almost wasn't going to do this because i'm just trying to get through so much before spring break but i'm glad i did because i really can see kids really learning how to like figure out the meanings of words using context or word parts and then coming up with synonyms and i think that's valuable and that was one of my big goals this year um and so yeah that's how the day went I tried once again to attach my leadership application uh, to Autocrat, which is what I need to use for it to automatically download into a PDF document. And Autocrat on this one looks different and I don't know what's going on. So I had to email the tech person. Um, and at that point I decided it's time to go home. So now I'm home, I'm gonna walk Woofy. I'm gonna close. Yes I am. <laughs> I'm gonna close out the vlog when I get back. Cute. Say hi. Oh. 
Um, and I'll probably close it out by showing you these packages that you're on top of. One of them is just my factor meals. Maybe I'll tell you what I got again. I don't know if that's of interest to you guys. And then the other one is just something that I got for myself because it's my birthday month. And I'm just deciding to get a couple of treats. So I'm gonna walk Woofy. I'll be back to close out the vlog afterwards. I'm home in my closet. I've been home for a while. I just was on the phone with a friend of mine and I meant to take footage of the walk because it's been such a nice day in Southern California. Like it actually was sunny enough for me to wear my sunglasses. It felt like spring. It was great, but I was distracted um, because the school that is by my house had open house. So there was a lot of people out on the sidewalk and Wolfie always gets like a little nervous with people. And then I don't know, I was on my phone and got distracted. But I'm in my closet trying to figure out what to wear tomorrow. I need to wear green. Um, I'm not going to show you my meals from Factor because the box is downstairs and I forgot to do that. And I'm too lazy to go downstairs after this to open the box and get back on camera. So hopefully you can forgive me for that. Um, mm, hold on. Taylor is texting me some last minute plans before she goes to Italy. And we just laugh because I'm like, I guess this is payback because not this past December, but the December before I left her right before winter break to go to Spain and she was all on her own. So, but anyway, I need to find something to wear that's green. Um, but I do have an update and I just want this to encourage us out there in the teaching world or really any let me see if I can sit down I'm trying to make it so that my head's not cut off but I can't um, encourage you in any professional setting where you feel like you're not being valued so I think several vlogs ago I talked about how I was involved I'm pretty sure I talked about this I was how I'm involved with this um, district committee that does equity work. So we go to these meetings, we get the lesson um, of the month, and then we go back and share that with our staff. And then we're also doing three additional observations from Dr. Holly and his team that's based on cultural response, culturally and linguistically responsive practices. And so there were some teachers that were not getting adjunct duty credit on their site, meaning like we teach, but then each teacher at every school has to do additional duties like maybe you're in charge of red ribbon week or you're in charge of the AR celebrations or for me like you're a leadership teacher or something along those lines adjunct duties are additional duties that you have to do in addition to teaching to kind of keep the school running and so some of us were getting adjunct duty credit for doing all of this work on this committee and some of us weren't and some of us were being told that per the district like the work that we were doing was not worth adjunct duty credit, which is ridiculous um, because there are some adjunct duties that people do on sites that really don't equate to anything, but they get points. So for example, a teacher could be in charge of Red Ribbon Week, but they don't really have to do anything because Red Ribbon Week is kind of a national thing and all they have to do is print out the spirit days from the Red Ribbon Week website and put that in teachers boxes and really be done with it and they get points for that so um since i'm a union rep i think i'm the only union rep within that committee i said i'll bring it up at a union meeting um so i brought it up and then the board our union board had to go to the district and express that concern and initially they came back and said no adjunct duty credit but there was also some confusion like they thought at that time i was asking for us to be financially compensated for the work that I was doing, which I wasn't, although I felt like we should. So we eventually got to the place where they were like, okay, the people that are on that committee can get adjunct duty credit. So I let all the members on the committee know. Um, but by that point, there were people on the committee that did another job, like they were Kagan coaches. And they get a stipend, meaning they get paid to do that. And that's that particular stipend position is what we were being compared to 
by the district. And the district was saying the work that we do was not comparable to what a Kagan coach does. And when that was said to me, I just about lost my mind because the work that we do is a lot. We go to those meetings, we get the session packets, we have to deliver at every staff meeting. It's sensitive uh, information. Not everybody is receptive to it. A lot of us are doing three additional observations a year. So I was heated. <laughs> Um, so when we got word that we would get adjunct duty credit, um, I talked to the union president and said, that's fine. But the next step is us, I'm going to be asking for us to be financially compensated. So at the last committee meeting that we had, the person that kind of heads it from the district was saying they're in the process of deciding what the committee is going to look like next year, what the direction is going to be. And I asked her if she knew anything at all and she didn't. And so at that point, I took the opportunity to say, and I had also said this to my principal, if this work that I've been doing the past couple of years now continues next year and we're still not going to be compensated for it in a way that I feel like is appropriate then i'm just not going to do it like i will continue the work and the practices in my classroom because i believe that they're important um but i'm not going to do it for the district and i said and that's unfortunate because everybody on this committee volunteered to do it because we all have a passion for cultural and linguistically responsive teaching but i said at the same time the district cannot take advantage of the passion that I have for this work and think that I'm going to be doing all of this for free. So I said, I just want to be very clear about that. Like that's where I'm at. I'm in a me season <laughs> where I got to take care of me and put me first. Cause if I don't, no one will. And so I said, if we're not compensated, I, I know that I won't be doing it next year. So today after school, we got an email from the superintendent that's over this committee saying that they are going to be giving us a stipend this year um it's not as much as the kagan coach but it's more than half of what they make um so we're going to be getting that stipend for our work this year and that starting next year we will be getting a stipend and i have to say like in all humility um there are times where i feel like i'm too opinionated or maybe not too opinionated, but too outspoken or too comfortable expressing my opinions. I think a lot of times the opinions and thoughts that I have are shared by others in the room, but for whatever reason, they choose not to say it. And I don't really have the ability all the time to just kind of keep my opinion to myself if I feel very strongly about it. Um, and so there are times where I feel like I need to work on that or I should be more quiet or I need to like pipe down. <laughs> And today when I read that email saying that we would get a stipend, um, I was very thankful that I am the way that I am, that I did say what I said. I'm not saying I'm the direct reason why that change was made, but I do feel very confident in saying that I was very much a factor in that because I know I was very vocal about it. And I, I'm confident that the person that I said that to shared it because the committee is important to her. So I say all that to say like coming from a place of teachers, especially because I think a lot of times teachers tend to be people pleasers and we don't want to rock the boat and we don't want people to be upset. And that is what the system takes advantage of, whether the system be your administrators, the district the public school system in general is that teachers want to be people pleasers and be the nice people and they won't speak up. They'll just keep doing the work if we keep piling it on. And we need to stop that. There are ways to assert yourself or stand up for yourself in a professional way and let it be known that this, this is like, this is my boundary. And that's essentially what I feel like I was saying. Like, this is my boundary. My boundary is I'm doing all of this work that's important. And although I'm passionate about it and I believe in it, that does not mean that I should be doing all of this additional work for free. I'm putting on professional development at staff meetings for you. And this is a district initiative. So it's important if you have something to say, if you feel strongly about something, then you should speak out and you should let that be known. Um, because if you don't, nothing's gonna change. And if you do, the worst that's gonna happen is they're gonna know how you feel about something and say no, but you never know. They may know how you feel about something, have a moment of realization, or maybe learn that you've been feeling this way and make positive changes for the better. So I'm going to pat myself a little bit on the back for that, but um, 
I'm gonna end the vlog here because this was an unexpected conversation. Um, what I wanna show you, I don't, I'm not even prepared to get it out. It's packaged up, but I will be sure to show it to you tomorrow. It's already 6.39 um, and I need to edit this vlog for sure. Good morning, it's another day. It's Wednesday, March the 20th and this is now a three day vlog. <laughs> um, I am at school what am I trying to do? Just trying to get uh, everything set up because in about 10 minutes, the leadership kids are gonna show up because we have to go back to the front of the school to promote the color run. And then, and I just realized I forgot to make copies of what I need for that. And then I have transition meetings from 7.45 to about 10.30 <laughs> today. So I will be in a separate room. I'm not really sure I'm gonna manage that because I feel like I'll have to be going back and forth between my classroom or where the transition meetings are and calling the sub just to let him or her know what to do next because I certainly wasn't going to be making sub plans for today. Um, so I'm just here to say good morning. Let me, let me calm down here because I'm signing into my email. Here to say good morning. Also just once again, really proud of myself these are Taylor sub plans. Really proud of myself for just once again having another night where I realized the evening was late and I didn't really have the time or the energy to edit a vlog and just giving myself the grace of not doing that and knowing that the world's not gonna come to an end and knowing that you guys are so, so nice and so, so supportive when I say I just needed time. I really feel like I'm on the right path. <laughs> um, also, I did go to Starbucks this morning. I didn't get to do the taste test with you because I couldn't find the camera holder um, for my phone. And all I can say is it, it tastes, you know what, let me give it another sip. I'm gonna give it a seven because it tastes a little different. But um, there's that. And also I didn't work out this morning because I needed to get up early and I felt like my body needed a rest. So, good morning. More than likely, I won't be talking to you again until after school, but I just wanted to say, hey. All right, it is 12.45, I am at lunch. I am done with my transition meetings for the day, um, which I'm glad about. I was able to get some of the narratives graded, not a lot, like it takes a long time. I will say so far, these narratives have been better than ones I've gotten in the past. Just the few that I've read. They have, they're easier to follow. They feel more focused. And I think it's easier for kids to create a story when they're involved. So that's been promising, but I'm still very early in the process. And um, came back, we read, or the kids listened to Born Worker by Gary Soto, just the first read. One of the things that I had them do today after we did the first read, because normally with the first read, we just listen to it, talk about it. We don't really do anything else with it. But in the last uh, couple weeks, I realized kids just need practice summarizing and it's just a good skill to have. So I had them work in their group for about five minutes to come up with a basic summary of the story Born Worker. And then I called on a few volunteers I heard some pretty solid summaries, so that was good. And then we moved into history. So um, I've mentioned the last couple of days that in history we're doing a chapter that I've never gotten to before. And what the task is, is that the kids become foreign policy advisors. And so today was the first day that they got to get in their groups of three and start working on the first presidential dilemma that they have to provide advice for. So this one, uh, involves President Adams and they're giving him advice on how he should handle the conflict that the country is currently facing with France. So quick history lesson during the Revolutionary War, France helps the colonies, their help allows uh, the U.S. to win the Revolutionary War and the U.S. makes an alliance with them that says should you ever need our help we will be there for you. Time passes, France is at war with Great Britain, so of course they're relying on the United States to fulfill the promises in their treaty. They don't, and instead, um, the US signs a new alliance with Britain. This makes France mad, so they start bombing US warships, um, and they basically say, we're gonna keep doing this unless the United States sends us a large sum of money. 
The United says, States says no. Uh, American citizens are outraged at the demand of money from France. And uh, President Adams has this undeclared war going with France that makes him pretty popular. So now, but we, we as a country can't afford to be at war. We don't have the money. We don't have a strong military. So now we're foreign policy advisors telling him what we think he should do to handle this conflict with France. So the kids are given four options. Um, option A, they're either going to advise him to declare war on France immediately. Option B, form a military alliance with Great Britain and declare war on France together. Option C, do not go to war but try to negotiate with France. Or D, end all overseas shipping. So in their group of three, they have to decide which of those four options they're going to recommend, justify it, and then give reasons why the other options are not viable. So we did that in homeroom. We didn't get to present. They just had time to draft their advice, and then we'll present tomorrow. And they did a pretty good job, from what I could tell. So that is promising. And then it was lunch, which leads me here. So just checking in. Um, the bell's going to ring in a minute. But so far, the day is going well. My favorite part of the day is this outfit that I'm wearing. This is extremely comfortable. And I'm going to try and get some footage of it because I also bought some new shoes. And that's what I was supposed to show you yesterday. Um, so I'll show them to you. And that's it. So, so far, a good day. I am so sleepy. <laughs> it's 4.08. Um, and I'm getting ready to go home. But before I left, I needed to make sure I got my slide ready for tomorrow, which I did. Um, but I have to fine tune what I'm doing tomorrow because I'm... I'm not 100% sure because we're doing a story I've never done before. But before we get into tomorrow, let's talk about today. Um, I checked in, I think, at lunch to talk about how the history portion was going with the kids uh, preparing foreign policy advice to President Adams. And I, at lunch, I said it went well with homeroom. They were really on task and pretty much into it. Same with Switch. So that was good news. Um, so both classes, we didn't have enough time for them to prepare their advice and then present it. So we're going to present first thing tomorrow during our history block. And then we will read about what uh, President Adams actually decided to do. Um, what's interesting is, I don't know the general consensus in homeroom, like what their option, what option they, most groups are choosing. But in my switch class, it sounds like most of them are choosing the option of creating an alliance with Britain and declaring war, which I personally think is an interesting choice. <laughs> so we'll see what their justification is um, tomorrow. And then of course with Born Worker, we just read the story, I had them summarize. And so what I was trying to figure out, and this is the part I'm not 100% sure on with tomorrow, is I don't want to assign another set of think questions on study sync because A, I already have to finish grading these narratives, which takes a long time. B, I still have to read and grade the first three questions that go with mother to son. And if I add this, that's a third th third piece of writing that I need to grade and I quite honestly don't want to do that. And also, like I'm just trying to get the story ended by the end of the week. and. If I don't end by the end of the week, I want it to be something that could easily be picked up when we come back from spring break. And the two characters in the story are so different to me that I think it's a good story to do character analysis. So I was looking for things on TPT to see if I could use anything and kind of make that work. I found something, I think, I hope, because I already bought it. Um, that is just gonna have them do some character analysis and walk them through the steps. Again, I just kind of skimmed through this. It seemed reasonable. And so my thought is tomorrow to kind of have them go through one of these tasks uh, tomorrow and continue to work on that on Friday. And then when we come back, maybe have them do like a character poster. Some groups will be getting um, the character Jose, who is the protagonist slash narrator of the story. And then some groups will be getting um, Arnie, who is his cousin. And while I'm saying that, a part of me wonders if I should just give homeroom one character and switch the other. And I just felt like that would be a good idea because that's something, depending on how they turn out, that could be on display during open house so the parents can see some of what we do with study sync. 
So what I need to do is go home and kind of really look at this product that I just purchased for $2.99 and see if I want to use it and kind of plan that out and edit this vlog because it's going to be long. So I'm just here to say probably to wrap it up for the day and also see if I can show you my outfit because it was so comfortable and it got me through the day. There really is no way for me to do it. So maybe when I go home, I'll just show it to you in the mirror so you can see a full view. And if that's the case, I'm gonna just say bye for now from the classroom. The next time you see me is gonna be at home in my mirror where I will close out this vlog. Okay, so let me get myself together, go home. Unfortunately, I have to do some more work. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Okay, I'm home, just got home. And as promised, I hustled upstairs before taking Wolfie out on his walk to get in front of my mirror in the bathroom so that you could see my outfit. Now, I'm not saying this is the most fashionable outfit that I've ever worn, but it's just really comfortable. And I'm really showing it to you to show you the shoes I was gonna show you yesterday. So this is what I wore today. And when I tell you it felt like I was wearing pajamas all day, that's what it felt like. I was extremely comfortable. So this shirt, I've worn it before. This is a little button down shirt that I got from Target a month or so ago. This top is old. It's from Ann Taylor Loft. It just has like little colored specks on it that matches the screen. And these are some white leg pants that I got from Ann Taylor Loft. But these shoes, I cannot recommend enough. I talked about them on Instagram last week. I have a pair of these in black that I got on a whim because it was one of those things that I saw on Instagram and I got sold right away. So I bought these in black. They are Sam Edelman. And every time I wear these, I always get compliments. I think just because the color combination, they're different. And I get compliments from males and females. So, and hopefully I wasn't covering the microphone just now. <laughs> on a whim, I bought another pair or let me rephrase that. On a whim, I was like, you know what? It's my birthday month. I really like those shoes. Let me see if they have other colors that I like. And I ended up buying not one pair, but two. So the pair that I'm wearing today, these are the white ones. You know, white is always iffy, but you always need white shoes. Um, they're white, but they also have like a very, I think that's like gray or taupe. And then the other ones I bought are here. These too sure about I might take these back because I don't I want the blue to be darker all right again I'm moving my hand because I don't know if I covered up the microphone but I bought these is what I was saying and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them because I want the blue to be darker but after wearing the white ones today and just reaffirming how comfortable they are I'm like maybe you should keep them We'll see. <laughs> so I will try my hardest, my darndest to remember to put the link to these shoes in the description box in case you're interested, but I was super comfortable today. Um, so I'm gonna take this boy who is obsessed with just shadows that he's seeing. So he's Wolfie. <laughs> I'm about to take I'm about to take him out on his walk and then I'm gonna come home, shower get this vlog edited and uploaded and then do work stuff that I need to do. Um, so I am so, so tired. <laughs> it's 4:23, and I am physically tired. Um, today has been more physical in my teaching life than typical days. And I actually need to wash my hands. That reminds me. Um, we have these storage areas on campus. One we call the mobile mini, which is a big metal storage area. And then we have uh, a larger classroom where we have all of our staff meetings that has built in shelving. And both of those places have had like just tons of things stored there. And so the principal tasked me and a few other groups on campus to look through all that stuff discard what we don't need because we're running out of space to store the things that we actually do need. So this morning during my prep period, me and a few leadership students were in the mobile mini trying to organize that, but that thing is a hot mess. There's like old furniture in there and all kinds of stuff. And then after school, I offered community involvement hours to my entire class, which is basically their service hours. After school for an hour and a half to clean out the shelving in the larger classroom where we have our staff meetings. 
and that's just worn me out. Like I'm just tired of just like moving boxes, sorting through things. Um, but we got the classroom cleared and now we just need to move the things that we've determined that we need to keep either into my pod area, which is that center area that sometimes you guys see me in where there's cabinets and storage or to the mobile mini, but we really can't, I don't want to put anything into that mobile mini until everything that's coming out of there is coming out. So we're just in the beginning stages of organizing. So I'm tired. And after I talk to you guys and clean up and make sure I'm ready for tomorrow, I'm gonna go home. I don't even think I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna do any work. On my list of things to do today is to edit this vlog that I keep saying I'm gonna edit. Um, I need to email, send an email before I leave. I have to write this down. And um, work on some sub plans because I'm not going to be here April the 1st. That will be the day that I take off for my birthday. Although my birthday is March 31st, I still feel like I should get a day because when my birthday falls on a Sunday, it just doesn't count. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the first off. And I wanna make sub plans so that when I leave tomorrow, they're ready to go and I don't have to stop in over spring break or anything like that. So I don't know that I'll do any of that. I might tinker in my sub plans. I got them started. Um, maybe I'll edit as much of this vlog as I can, but maybe I'll just go home, walk Wolfie, eat, and sit down, because I am tired. But as far as teaching went today, it was a really good day. In my leadership class, I did have the ASB teacher from the high school they feed into come with um, a couple of current ASB students. So they come every year around this time to talk to the current eighth grade leadership students about the application process at the high school level, what ASB and student leadership looks like at the high school level, what are the expectations, all of that. Um, so they came and did that. And then in my core classes, which are language arts and history, I was actually very impressed with both classes. I, I don't know what inspired them, but they were they were giving academics today. <laughs> like they were really on task. So I didn't bring that paper with me. Yesterday when I was wrapping up for the day, I think I mentioned, oh, here they are, that I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in language arts today because we are reading a story I've never read before in Study Sync. Um, this year I've been all about switching things up, picking different stories, um, with a focus on making sure the things that we read are diverse. So I skipped Tom Sawyer, I'm not doing, I didn't do Little Women, and I jumped to the poem Mother to Son by Langston Hughes, and then the story we're reading now is called Born Worker by Gary Soto. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze at any minute, so just bear with me, by Gary Soto. And it's about two cousins. One cousin comes from a very uh, working class based family. Like, um, what is, why does this even look this way? What? <laughs> a working class family and um, money's tight. And then his cousin is from a middle class family. So a little bit more privileged, has access to things. And the two of them come up with this business idea to do odd jobs around their neighborhood. And um, the cousin that's middle class is very annoying, very obnoxious, like you, it's clear that you're not supposed to like him. And the narrator is the one that is from the working class family. And you don't know a whole lot about him, but you know he's a hard worker. He really values hard work because he has to. And um, during the course of one of their jobs, an older man falls into this empty pool that they're tasked to clean with. The annoying middle class obnoxious cousin is like, hey, let's run off and leave this guy. What if people think we did it? And then the narrator decides to stay with him and help him out. And it's just kind of like the dynamic between those two. And I thought it was a really good story to do character analysis because they're two very different kinds of people. So I bought something on TPT yesterday, hoping that it would work out for me and it did. So what I ended up choosing from this package all on character analysis, like this TPT product, if you wanted to write a paragraph about it, you could. If you wanted to write an essay, you could. There's a lot more to it, but I just chose this graphic organizer, which um, has them analyze a character using the STEAL acronym, S-T-E-A-L, 
and my battery's gonna run out. S stands for speech, what does the character say? E stands for effect, how does this character impact or what effect do they have on others? Um, A stands for actions, what does the character do? How does their behavior, or what does their behavior say about them? Um, I forgot the T. T is their thoughts, what are their thoughts and opinions and ideas? And then the L stands for looks. What do we learn about them from just their overall appearance? So they filled this out. I let them work in groups. Of course, their responses to these questions had to be text-based. And they were really working on it in their groups and came up with some good stuff and really did well in both classes. I'm going to pause here and switch this battery before it dies. So anyway, they did really well with that. I was very impressed, like I said, with both classes. And then afterwards, after completing that page, they had to do... Uh, Venn diagram where they compare and contrast like um, tell me about Arnie on this side Jose on that side what's different about them and then obviously what's what are things they have in common so they worked on those two pages as a group I gave them class time and then we discussed and that was great so tomorrow my plan is to take that and then have them do an actual character sketch. So the other thing I wasn't sure about, and I really didn't decide until the very last minute, was I wasn't sure if I wanted both classes to analyze both characters, or one class do one and the other class do the other. Really because my thought is this might be something I wanna put up for open house. Um, so I had my class, my homeroom class, um, they had a rock, paper, scissor, rock, paper, scissor contest to decide what character they were gonna do. My homeroom class, uh, they did Arnie, which they weren't happy about, but I was like, to me, he's the easier one to analyze. And then my switch class did Jose. So tomorrow they should be actually sketching it out, probably on chart paper, and we'll see how those turn out, because I've never done that before. And then in history, they had to present their foreign policy advice to President Adams and the dilemma he was facing on whether or not to continue his undeclared war with France. So today was the day they had to give their advice. Um, I gave them, <laughs> do I still have it open? Um, let's see. I projected this slide for them to look at and said, we are at the White House and you are speaking to President Adams and said you need to be speaking very professionally and you know, you're know you about to give him some very critical advice for this dilemma that we're in. So this was on the screen while they were presenting and they had to talk to him. Um, and so they each presented, they did a good job and then at the end, they have to drag their group's number to what option they chose. So this was my switch class and it was split between option B and option C. Option, oops, option B was form a military alliance with Great Britain and declare war on France together. And option C was do not go to war, but try to negotiate with France. So my switch class was tied with that. My homeroom class, I believe the majority of them chose option C to negotiate with France, which to me is, if you're really paying attention, is the right choice because the country could not afford war. Um, and then I read the next section in TCI, which tells them what the president actually decided to do. So I thought that went well. And I greeted them while they were presenting on, very formally on these little post-it notes that I have to keep near me. <laughs> so that is how the day went. And that is all the energy I have to say about today. So at this point, I'm not even gonna end the vlog. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I'll see you tomorrow. I can't even fathom how long this vlog is going to be. It feels like it's gonna be an hour, if not more. So, sorry to those of you that don't have that kind of time. And yay for those of you that missed the longer vlogs. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna clean up in here and then I'm gonna go home and I will see you guys tomorrow, my Friday before spring break. <laughs>
most of the footage that I have from this week and we're already at 50 minutes. <laughs> and that's with me cutting some things out. So I will probably keep the vlogging to a minimum because I'm not trying to give you guys a two hour long vlog. Um, I still have to add yesterday's footage and today, I think. Um, that's number one. Number two, it's Mimi Day at my school. And just based on what you see here, I want you to leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what meme do you think that I am, just from what you see. Thirdly, I went to Starbucks after my workout this morning. Here it is, and we're gonna do our taste test. Remember, you have to, to assess. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight. This is an iced coffee that I make to taste like a vanilla sweet cream cold brew because I had 100 stars and I wanted to get it for free. And I also, since my coffee was free, I got a breakfast item. And I gave the potato chive bites a try again. I haven't eaten them. But yeah, I'm just here to say good morning. Just here to show you the top half of my Mimi Day outfit um, and give you an opportunity to guess who you think that I am. Maybe I'll do like a big reveal at the end of the vlog. We'll see. Um, but I don't really have much to say. Just on my way to school. Today's a minimum day. What is this car trying to do? Um, today is the day that I'll find out how many... Oof, <laughs> how many color run packages we've sold and then decide what to do from there. And um, quite honestly, I have quite a bit of work that I need to do over break. I mean, I guess it's not a lot of work. I have to get the rough drafts of the literary, not a literary analysis, rough drafts of the narratives graded so that they have them to revise during the week when we get back. That's probably what I'm gonna have them do with the sub on that Monday. So I need to get that done. And there's like leadership stuff in my brain that feels like it's not organized. So I need to get that set and ready to go. Um, I don't know if I said this yesterday, but just in case in other news, I decided to keep the blue tennis shoes that I showed you. So the Sam Edelman shoes, the blue, they look darker on camera um, than they are in person, but I wore them yesterday and I actually liked them. So I'm gonna keep those. So those are all the breaking pieces of information that you need to get through your routine. Um, so I will talk to you guys later. Hello, um, it's 4.30 right now. I'm at home and I almost forgot to close out the vlog. So it's Friday. I saw you this morning and told you that today's clips would be short because the vlog is already going to be long and then gave you the challenge to see if you could figure out um, who I was for Mimi Day. So if you didn't already know or didn't figure it out or you don't follow me on Instagram, I was The Rock for Mimi Day when he's wearing his little fanny pack. I'll try and remember to edit a little photo somewhere around here so that you can see the comparison. But it's also on my Instagram page because I just posted that if you want to see it. So that's who I was. Um, the kids enjoyed it. Some people thought I was just wearing this as an outfit. <laughs> And so if they thought that I was like, no, it's remember it's Mimi Day and this is the meme that I am. And then when they saw the picture, they made the immediate connection. Um, so that was fun as far as the day went. Um, did I talk about this yesterday? What I had, we had very little time. Like I didn't even have my leadership class today because it was the eighth grade students, eighth grade students versus staff basketball games. So we didn't have PE or our elective period, which are the first two periods of the day for us. And then it was a minimum day, so all the classes were shorter. So we didn't know history today. I just had them do like larger character sketches um, for either Arnie or Jose based on whatever class they were in. And they used their notes from yesterday and that's all they worked on. And they really only had about an hour to do that. And most groups either finished or were mostly done. So um, we left off there. It was a good day. Everybody was productive. I don't have any complaints. Um, today was technically the cutoff day for the color run purchases, um, but we're gonna go ahead and extend sales. Um, the good news is, is we've sold and that's a plus. Um, we've sold, but not as much as I want to sell. So we're gonna extend the window to a few days before the actual color run, which is going to be in April. 
The only downside to that, and I need to get all that figured out in the email, is that we can't pre-order the exact number of different size shirts that we need. So now we're just gonna be guesstimating um, for the rest, how many small, medium, large, and possibly extra large shirts we need to send to our t-shirt vendor. So I have to get all that figured out today and send that over to the secretary so she can send it to um, the person that we're gonna be using. But it sounds like there's a, there's a lot of um, excitement about it. And again, I think once it happens and we see it next year, when we start promoting it, they'll have a frame of reference and we're definitely gonna promote it way earlier in the school year, probably when school starts and give parents all year to kind of purchase. So um, that's how the day went and then after school, I had to go to the two feeder schools to pick up any cells they had and there wasn't a lot. One school only had one fifth grader purchase it and the other school had maybe nine, I think. Now the other thing I told one of the secretaries is, I didn't, it didn't dawn on me until today, it's possible that there's more fifth graders participating because they may have an older sibling at my school. And so their parents may have just purchased their package um, when they purchased the package for their current middle school student. I don't know. But as of right now, I don't know. I don't know, I guess maybe next year I have to try it one more time with inviting the feeder schools, but then give those schools more time. Um, but a part of me is like, well, maybe we just won't invite them if it's not really something the fifth graders are into, but we'll see. So we're still gonna be selling, still promoting, still pushing that. But all in all, it was a good day and I am officially on spring break and I'm super happy about it. My sister is here. I was gonna try and catch footage of her, but she's upstairs taking a shower. Um, we're gonna go to dinner as a family later. She's never here during our birthday, so this is the closest she's ever been. So we're gonna try and do that dinner as a family tonight. Um, but she's well, she's in town because this weekend is the uh, funeral services for the aunt that I had that passed. So that's what she's in town for. But I can definitely tell you I won't vlog next week. I may or may not show up on Instagram, but I have no intentions of picking up the camera. I'm gonna try and give myself a real break. I don't have any concrete plans. There's like personal business I need to take care of, like car maintenance and see about getting my taxes done, but I don't have any plans. I'm just looking forward to resting and I will have to do some work. Um, that's gonna have to happen. <laughs> so um, I guess it's good that this vlog is longer because you won't see me for a week or so. But if you enjoyed this week's vlog, I should say, give it a thumbs up. If you have enjoyed the longer format, give it a thumbs up. Um, I won't return to this format just because like I've said, uploading daily is easier for me to manage. And as always, I hope that you guys are well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. Bye.